Welcome back. Now we will take up that question of what rights do creditors have against those borrowers, those debtors, who have defaulted on their debt. Creditors generally collect the debts that are owed to them. Sometimes, however, a debtor cannot or will not pay. Well, the law provides a means to protect the creditor's right to payment. Creditors have rights against third parties who provide payment assurances on behalf of the debtor. And we'll talk about the situation in which that typically arises. So today we're going to look at the rights and remedies available to creditors. After this lecture, you should be able to answer these questions. What is a lien? What are two types of statutory liens? What's a judicial lien? What does it mean when we foreclose on a mortgage? What's the difference between suretyship and guaranteeship? And what protections does the law give to debtors? Now, a creditor can seek out multiple ways to protect itself to ensure that the loan is going to be repaid. And we've already talked about the ability of the creditor to take a security interest in collateral. But what if there's not enough collateral to justify the size of the loan? What else can a creditor do? Well, one of the things a creditor will often do is require the borrower to execute a personal guarantee. So if you've opened up a new business and you're doing business as an LLC, a limited liability company, that limited liability company, that LLC, may not have any credit of its own, the lender may extend credit to that LLC, but it knows the LLC doesn't have sufficient assets with which to repay that loan. So what the creditor will do is will to say to the debtor, yes, you can give to us a guarantee instead of collateral to assure that the loan will be paid back if the debtor defaults on payment. And so creditors may want to make debtors more accountable by securing a business loan with both a security interest in certain collateral and a personal guarantee, meaning the debtor is going to pledge whatever assets it has alongside a guarantee generally from the owner of the debtor guaranteeing repayment. Now these, these types of guarantees often occur in commercial leases that when a company leases a property, the landlord understands that that company may be out of business before the term of the lease expires. Therefore, they want to ensure that they receive their money for the time of the lease and therefore they will ask the debtor to execute a personal guarantee. So an LLC, a limited liability company, yes, no one can come after that company or the owners of that company. However, generally the lender has already asked those owners to provide a personal guarantee to support repayment of the debt. What about third parties, rights against third parties? A creditor may permit a debtor to secure a loan by asking for a third party to guarantee repayment of that loan, to back up the promises made by the original debtor. When a debtor agrees to be primarily liable, that's known as a surety. A surety is a guarantor who agrees to be first in line of liability. I mean, the creditor does not have to attempt to collect payment from the debtor first. Instead, the, the, uh, uh, the surety has um, equal liability on the repayment of this debt. I mean, the creditor doesn't have to go after the debtor first. It can simply turn to the surety. That's one way that a third party can guarantee the debt 
of, of another. If the third party agrees to be liable only if the debtor actually defaults, then it becomes what's known as a guarantor. The law regarding surety and guarantors tends to be very close. The differences in this situation, in order to collect from a guarantor, a creditor must first go after the debtor. To recover against a surety, the creditor doesn't have to go after the debtor first. It can simply seek repayment from the third party. Surety guarantor agreements are a form of contract. Now, sureties and guarantors are entitled to assert de defenses that would relieve them of payment liability. For instance, when we've talked about the statute of frauds before, surety guarantor agreements must be in writing. So if there is no written guarantee agreement, surety agreement, the surety or the grantor is entitled to say there is no writing, therefore we don't owe the money. So the surety or the guarantor, they have rights in themselves. However, they also have the rights that the debtor have. So the surety or the guarantor can assert any defenses that the debtor has on the underlying contract. If the debtor is going to argue that the creditor made it impossible to repay the loan or that the, that the creditor committed fraud in making the loan, the guarantor can also assert that same fraud defense. The guarantor has all of the rights of the debtor. The surety and the guarantor have all of the rights of the debtor. So they have the ability to assert defenses on their own behalf, but they also have the ability to assert defenses on behalf of the underlying debtor.